Let my mouth be filled with your praise, that I may sing aloud. My lips shall shout for joy when I sing to you. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I was mentioning yesterday at the end of Mass, and I want to remind you now, just because it's easy, easy to forget, that after I wash my hands, I come back to the altar and I begin the prayer, pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. It's at that point that the congregation stands and responds, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. We were getting about a half a prayer too soon. Like as soon as I came back and began that prayer, everybody was rising, or even before I began the prayer. So I'll try to indicate that maybe today just to, as a reminder during Mass. Also, you'll remain in your places for communion, and I'll distribute communion where you're at. Um, for, let us, pr uh, brothers and sisters, prepare ourselves to enter the sacred mysteries, calling to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, Restorer and lover of innocence, direct the hearts of your servants toward yourself that those you have set free from the darkness of unbelief may never stray from the light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and presbyters and they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city with compact unity, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord according to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Remain 
in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia. 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 We bless you, Father. The Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily proclaim his holy gospel, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it may, so it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm struck by the Gospel image of the vine and the branches and the withered branches, and the dead branches, and the sign of bearing fruit. You know, if we, each of us, questioned ourselves before God and did an examination of our lives as disciples and asked, well, am I bearing fruit? Of course, we might need to define a little bit of that. What do we think of as fruit you know but it's still a very excellent question for us to ask ourselves because sometimes in the life of a disciple we can just gradually fade away you know gradually we're no longer remaining in christ remaining in communion with christ and as a result, we become like those dead branches that are stripped away, piled up. We had an image of that this past week or two weeks as work was being done here on the campus. And you could see the workers out there trimming the different uh, bushes and palm trees and the stacks of branches that over the course of just a short couple of days turned from being green to brown and they're ready to be burned up, right? So we might ask ourselves, how long can I survive if I'm not remaining in Christ? Can you go from Easter to Christmas? Probably not. I'm thinking you're probably dead, okay? Those of you who are watching on camera, <laughs> That's not to say you have to be here right now. It's just to say that we have to get out of our mentality that somehow even Sunday Mass is enough. Can you go from Sunday to Sunday without eating? Can you go from Sunday to Sunday without breathing? How can you go from Sunday to Sunday without being in communion with Christ? You know, I can ask myself that same question because there are times whenever even my daily prayer becomes routine and dry and isn't producing any fruit. It's just become a routine. Just something to make me feel better because I did my prayers. In fact, even if you ever catch yourself saying, I did my prayers, you probably didn't pray. 
It was a task on your to-do list. Task on my to-do list. Check. Did my prayers. You're not. We have to be in Christ, in communion with Him, in a real prayer, intimacy. Pope Francis talked about this also, that intimacy with God is not just for the mystics, people who have some special gift for prayer. We all need to remain in Him in order to bear fruit. Uh, and so maybe this is a wake-up call for us all to look a little more closely to see if we are indeed uh, remaining in Christ daily. And then, for the most part, what we can do, obviously prayer is God's work within us, but to dispose ourselves for that union that gives life and bears fruit. So brothers and sisters, let us turn to God with faith as we present these prayers. May the prayers of Mary, honored today as Our Lady of Fatima, be joined to those of Pope Francis and Catholics around the world as we pray the rosary each day during May for deliverance from COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our that bishops, priests, and deacons will be particularly dedicated to prayer for the people entrusted to their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Christians persecuted for their faith and those who endure discrimination continue to draw life and hope for the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Danuta Smith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are undergoing surgery today, that God may work through the hands of doctors and nurses to restore them to full health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for your goodness shown throughout creation and in your people who give you glory. We offer these prayers to you with confidence in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be, be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. I only say the word and your soul shall. The Lord has risen and shown his light upon us, whom he has redeemed by his blood. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Just a reminder, uh, as you leave uh, after Mass, uh, to leave allowing six feet of distance between each of you as you leave, okay? So we want to continue to maintain that social distancing all the way to your cars, okay? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.